Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and so far in this series we've created a couple of nice pieces of UI, including our quest log and quest details page. However, currently all our tracking of progress only updates in the console. By the end of this video, we're going to set things up so that when you visit a new location and meet some objective in a quest, it actually updates here in the details log. Alright, that's where we're headed in this video, let's get started. All right, so our current setup includes our quest canvas, which holds the quest manager, the sort of quarterback for this entire system. And then underneath that, we've got two parts. We've got the uh, quest details, which we just created in the last video, as well as our quest log, which holds the slots themselves. Right now, the quest log has this quest log UI component, which essentially is what is currently printing our debug logs to show progress. We're gonna update that here so that instead of a debug, it sends it over to the quest details menu. We're also going to write a short script for these objectives that will allow them to gray out and show the correct information. So let's go ahead and hop into the quest log UI to start. All right, so far this is a very simple script that just has a single method, the handle quest clicked, which just makes it so that we get a message printing to our console whenever we click on a slot. We're going to update this first of all so that we can just print the name of the quest as well as its description over into the quest details page. To start, we're just going to need a reference to some text there. So let's make a TMP text reference called quest name text. It's not going to like that at first, so let's add the namespace, letting it know we're using TM Pro. We can then copy paste that variable and make another one, this time for our quest description text. Now we're just going to commandeer our existing method here. And instead of printing to the console, we'll get our quest name text and let its text know what the name of the quest is. And we can get that from the quest SO. We'll then do the exact same thing for our description text. With that done, we're already at a testable state. So let's pop into Unity, open up the quest details menu here, and we're just gonna find the quest name text to drag in there. And then under our backing, we'll grab the quest description text. We can hit play, and now when we get in the game, anytime you click on a slot, you can see that it's updating both the name and description. All right, we're off to a good start, but now let's do the hard part, which is getting these objectives to print. Now to make that happen, let's take a look at our quest objective slots here. If I open up my prefab, you can see that they're made up of two parts, a objective text as well as tracking text, which shows the current progress. We're just gonna write a short script that's going to control this text and also change its color so that it grays out once it's completed. And we're just gonna call this one quest objective slot. Before I have a chance to forget, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the quest objective slot parent, and then we can open up the script. All right, let's begin by getting rid of this start and update method. And actually up top here, the only namespace we need out of these three is using Unity Engine. That said, let's also add TM Pro in here since we're gonna need that in a second. We'll begin with a serialized text match pro reference for our objective text, then copy paste that and make another one for our tracking text. Now all the work here is going to be done through a public method called refresh objectives, which will run anytime we push a button. And it's going to need to take in some information, specifically the description, the progress text, as well as a bool for whether or not it's complete, which is whether or not we'll gray it out. So whenever we call this, we want to make sure our objective text's text gets updated with the description as that our tracking text text gets updated with our progress text. Finally, we're gonna get the color and here we're just gonna create a new color variable and what color it is will depend on whether or not the quest is complete. So we're gonna use a ternary operator here. And essentially just if it is complete, so if that's true, the color will be gray. Then we put a colon and if it's not true, it'll choose the color white. Now we're storing a color, either gray or white, but we need to apply it to our text now. So now we'll just get our objective text and make sure that its color is equal to the color we just stored up above. We'll also do the exact same thing for our tracking text's color. So very first thing, let's just take a look at our prefab here and fill in these references to our objective and tracking text. Since we did this in our prefab, when we head back out of here, you'll notice that all of the slots now have their variables filled. Great, that's working. Now let's actually send over the information they need to update themselves. So let's go to our quest log UI here. So first things first, in order to talk to those slots, we're going to need a reference to them. So let's make a serialized private quest objective slot array, which will allow us to hold all of the objective slots. We're also going to need to know which quest SO we're currently getting information from and then sending to those slots. 
Now down in Handle Quest Clicked, anytime we click on one of these, we want to store which quest scriptable object it is we're looking at. And then down below, just in order to separate concerns and keep this readable, we're going to create a new method called Display Objectives. This is going to do the work that our for each loop did before, however it's just a tiny bit more complex now, which is why I'm putting it in its own methods. We're going to leave that debug stuff there for now as we're going to borrow a little bit of that logic in just a sec. Now let's create that method, so we'll make a private void display objectives method. And well, before we could use a for each loop that just updated all of the objectives, we now have slots that we also need to toggle on or off depending on whether or not we're using them all. So this time we're going to use a for loop that's going to go through the slots themselves. That way we can both update the information but also toggle the slots on or off if they're not in use. So here, for each of the slots, we're just going to do an if statement. So if the slot number we're currently looking at, which is i, so it'll start at 0, is less than the number of objectives in our scriptable object, meaning there's actually an objective to go in this slot, then we'll just leave that for a sec and do the easy part first. We'll add an else statement. So if we're looking at a slot and it turns out there is no objective for it, then we just want to turn that slot's game object off. So now we can handle the case where there actually is information to go on this objective slot. So we need to find our objective. So let's make a variable to hold that objective. And it's just going to be equal to, and here we'll look at the quest scriptable object we're currently clicked on. And we just want to find the current objective. Here we're going to use the index i. So it'll start at zero and go up each time. So now that we've got our objective, we want to make sure that its progress is updated in our system. We're going to just cannibalize our old code to do that and tell our quest manager that it needs to update the progress for this one. We just pass along the scriptable object as well as the objective we just stored. With that done, our refresh objectives on the objective slot needs three pieces of information in order to display. So let's find that information now. We'll begin by finding our current amount of progress, so how many items we've currently collected, or if we've visited a location, say it'll be a 1. And to do this, we're just going to use our existing method in the quest manager called getCurrentAmount. This one also needs to know where the quest SO is, as well as which objective it's returning information for. With that done, we can get the string, our progress text, which again, we were printing to our console earlier. Here we'll also use our quest manager's existing get progress text and pass along the SO and objective as well. Now the last thing our slot needs to know is whether or not it's complete and here we're just going to perform a little logic. So this bool is complete is just going to be equal to and here we'll ask a question. Is our current amount greater than or equal to the objective's required amount? If it is then this will become a true and if it's not it will be false. At last, we can actually deal with our slot, first of all, turning it on since it has information, and also telling it to refresh its objectives. And here we'll pass along the information we just found, the objectives description, as well as our progress text, and the value for our is complete calculation. All right, that was buckets of fun, but let's actually test it now. So first of all, in our UI, let's go to our quest log, which now wants to know where its objective slots are. Let's just lock this in the inspector, that way we can use shift click to get all the objectives at once, and drag them in here. I've only set mine up to have three objectives at a time, but you can create more if you want to have bigger quests. Now to make this test more authentic, I just created a couple more quests off screen here, and so while we've already got the like the video, I'm just going to add a new one for leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. Alright, so now when we get in here, we can hit play, and whenever I click on a quest, it does update all of the text, including progress. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to toggle this menu yet, so I'm just going to turn it off. And if I visit the green hills and say talk to Blue Bob, I can now open back up my quest log. And now when I click on those quests, you can see that they're updating and also graying out completed objectives. All right, that's working pretty nicely. Big thing right now, though, is that this rewards area looks conspicuously useless. So let's update that. That's where we're going to head in the next video. Hope to see you there. Till then, though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.